<clears throat> okay, hello everyone. Today is, what is today? Thursday, July 11th, 2024. I'm on the road again, and uh, I just had an experience, and it, it occurred to me to make a video, and I asked Yeshua if he wanted me to make a video, and I was expecting him to say no, actually, and he said yes. Um, so, I'm going to open in prayer. This should be a short video, but let me just open in prayer. Father God, Yahweh, oh, once again, I just plead the blood of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth over my entire domain in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, Lord. I just ask in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please put a hot coal over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything you don't want me to or how you don't want me to. Will you please give me a check in my spirit if I'm about to cross any boundaries. Yeshua, will you please breathe into me afresh, overflowing your Holy Spirit and your peace that surpasses all comprehension, emotions, moods, and circumstances. Holy Spirit, I ask in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please fill my mouth with your words, baptize me afresh with your fire, Come and have your way here, Lord, Father God, Yahweh, Yeshua, Holy Spirit. Please come and speak through me for the edification of the two witnesses. I ask for all of this in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Okay, so what I feel, what I'm hearing Holy Spirit whisper to me right now is to start off by just establishing, in case there's any new people uh, to the channel, uh, the categories of people, who the two witnesses are, okay? The two witnesses are not literally two people or two men. There's really nothing. Like most of Revelation, if, if not all of it, is symbolic, metaphoric. It is not literal, okay? But the two witnesses are a company of people. They are men and women. They have the anointings, which are supernatural abilities. They have the anointings of the mantles of Moses and or Elijah, you can go to the end of the book of Malachi, where that is mentioned, okay? Uh, they also have lots of other anointings. Um, I know the Lord has told me that I have all the anointings. They are judges. They have the anointing of, of Deborah. Um, they have the anointing of the mantle of Ezekiel, um, and so forth. Some of them... Possibly all of them. I might end up doing another teaching on the two witnesses actually regarding what anointings they have. That's what I'm, that's what it's, that's what's occurring to me right now. I think Holy Spirit's kind of nudging me that I need to reteach that in a more clarified fashion. Um, do they all have the ox anointing, Lord? I'm, yeah. Yeah, so they have the ox anointing, which means they are pioneers, they are trailblazers. This is all stuff that I've talked about that God has told me who I am in Christ. Um, the point of this video, though, is to warn the two witnesses. Now, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that have the hashtag chosen ones. They talk about the chosen ones. I've asked the Lord if he wants me to do that. He has said no because people are defining that differently. I am talking about specifically the two witnesses. Now, I'm going to be doing a lot of teachings later on this year. Everyone is always obsessed with Revelation chapter 12, the woman and the man child and all that, okay? I have been saying what the Lord has told me, which is that you've got the Holy of Holies. Once you're so you move from the outer court to the inner court when you receive Christ as your Savior, okay? And then you move from the inner court to the Holy of Holies when you are conveyed into the kingdom by consecrating yourself and then God sanctifies you. Once you're in the Holy of Holies, that category, those are the people who are truly saved, okay? That category is then broken down. You've got Smyrna. Smyrna does just the just the bare minimum. They check the box to get into heaven, okay? Then you've got Philadelphia, okay? Philadelphia is the only one out of the seven churches that Yeshua addresses in the book of Revelation that he does not have a complaint against, okay? The Philad so the church of Philadelphia, that is the woman of Revelation 12, okay? And there's a subcategory of people in the church of Philadelphia. That is the child or the man-child or the, or the baby, okay, that comes out of the woman, okay? It's a subcategory of people that comes out of the church of Philadelphia. This is the two witnesses. The two witnesses, Revelation chapter 11, they will be killed. They will resurrect. They will ascend just like Christ. Everyone hates them because they are judges. They are assayers, as it says in the book of Jeremiah, okay? They are here to test you. And no, it's not of their own doing, okay? Just as um, Moses said in Korah's rebellion, you know, the words that come out of their mouths and what they do and what they say 
is 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 a commandment from God. It's supernaturally from God. It's uh, it's not of their own agenda. Okay. Anyway, so I've shared on this channel at some point in the over four years I've had it that right around when I went to graduate school, I don't know. I it I think it started dawning on me before graduate school and definitely was confirmed during graduate school, which was I went to graduate school late 2012 um, I began noticing that everywhere I went in life people noticed me and I seemed to be particularly opposed particularly abused particularly persecuted and you know I thought it was just me I thought I was um, cursed which technically I was I had generational curses and people did witchcraft against me and I've addressed all that stuff now at, at this point but you know I, I didn't know that it was something bigger than me okay well recently God has been leading me to some stuff and he's been bringing it to my attention <clears throat> that there seems to be this phenomenon going on and again a lot of these videos on YouTube people talk about chosen ones and I haven't until just recently been drawn to listen to this and I'm, I'm, I'm still not there, there's only one channel that God has brought me to and you know I only listen to stuff that God tells me to you know I'm not just gonna listen to anything on on YouTube um, I pretty much screen everything through him you know that's what we're supposed to do you're supposed to test everything it says that in Thessalonians keep uh, test everything keep what is good how do you know what's good you ask him what's good right I've taught this I've preached this over and over so, anyway, and what this person has been saying, like a, like a lot of it, if not all of it, has resonated as true. And I'm like, okay, so this isn't just me, you know. And I've had a sense over the last few years, I, when I, I've, as having this ministry, that it, that it wasn't just me. But I wasn't quite sure. It does seem to be particularly me. Now, granted, God did tell me that I'm chief of the Kohathites, which I believe he told me meant chief of the two witnesses. And I know a lot of people are going to get their feathers ruffled about that. Um, just in general, and especially because I'm a woman and yada, yada, yada. But um, he has been really having me trailblaze, particularly regarding the deliverance ministry that he has called me to. Um, and I, I'm going to be teaching on that later th this year. Um, once my deliverance is complete, and I have complete clarity to really 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 clarify things with him and make sure that I'm that I 100% know what I'm talking about before I present it and teach it um but I just had an ex I, I just had well yeah just now I had an experience and just a few days ago what is today today's Thursday sometime in the past week I had a very similar experience so you guys know that I have been <clears throat> I have been predominantly homeless now for three years, okay? Independence Day here in the USA pretty much marked the three-year anniversary of me being homeless, okay? Um, I've been moving around the southeast of the USA for the last three years, living transiently. It takes a toll, you know, but I have learned as I move around the country, there's just certain staples of where I will eat out. And when I can try to, to stay in an Airbnb and cook for myself, I, I will and whatever, whatever, right? So anyway, sometime in the past week, a few days ago, I went to a food chain here in the USA called Carl's Jr. Now, the same company owns Carl's Jr. that owns Hardee's. Where I'm going, I don't think is relevant, but it is interesting to me that both of these examples, it's they're owned by the same people, but so... This one particular place that I would go to, because I've been kind of staying at the same Airbnb on and off since like late April, and I have to go back there again because I'm waiting for something to get wrapped up that Satan's been holding up. I digress. Um, so I go through the drive through and I order my food. Now, I'm a picky eater. I always order something special, like custom. Um, and so, yes, I could see how that could stand out a little bit, but... I'm sure I'm not the only one who orders stuff special. I've worked fast food. I know that people order stuff special. I'm not the only one. But um, this particular place, they always insisted that I would pull up, you know, that you pay at the window, they give you your card back and your receipt, and they want you to pull up. And um, 
even if there wasn't a, a customer behind me. And I know that it had to do with their timer and their metrics and this, that, and the other. And so whatever, you know, and so like I, last time I had been there, they said something to me about it and I said, yeah, but no one's behind me. Like, you know, as a customer, that doesn't make any sense to me, you know? And, and yes, I understand from their perspective, but it's the, their metrics are not the responsibility of the customer, you know? So anyway, I pull up, I give my order at the little thing, and then I pull up to the window. The second I park the car at the window, this employee, I, I was just floored. I'm still floored at this. Uh, yeah, you're, you're the one that refuses to pull up, huh? And I'm, I'm like, what? Like, are, are you, are we actually having this conversation right now? Like, yeah, you're the one who will, who won't pull up or doesn't like to pull up. And, and I'm like, I, I was just flabbergasted. And, and, and then he continues on and he's like, um, what did he say? I'm losing my train of thought. Holy spirit, help me here. Yeah, right. So, so he says to me, uh, yeah, we've had a lot of complaints about you. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, am I an employee? Are you my boss or am I the customer? I'm the customer. Like, why is this conversation even happening right now? We've had a lot of complaints about you. And I'm like, by who? Y'all working there? Pay, you know, like, what? And so he actually tried to, like, hold my, my meal hostage. He didn't want to take my debit card until I seemingly agreed to pull up. And I'm, like, holding out my debit card. I'm like, you going to take my payment? You know, like... And he's like, well, are you going to pull up? And I said, well, are you going to give me my debit card and receipt? I didn't agree to it. So he finally takes my payment and there's no one behind me. So I'm not pulling up. And it's bad enough. I have to sit there. And then, and then he, he, we, we, we end up getting into this whole conversation of like, okay, it's, the sandwiches take like five minutes to cook, but they have a maximum window time of four minutes. And I said, do you comprehend that that is irrational on behalf of your corporate who is setting these metrics? I said, the fact that I'm going to sit here at the window going past four minutes, that information, that data is going to go back to corporate and it's going to give them that feedback that they need to adjust their expectations because they're real, they're unrealistic because their own sandwiches take longer to cook than that. And there are people that are going to order special at times, you know, and he just, you know, it, whatever. So I'm not, I'm not giving them my business anymore. I'm going to go to a different one, whatever. Right. So that was like sometime in the last week. I'm in a totally different state right now. Um, I'm in a different city. Now, about a month ago, I was passing through this city as I'm passing through this. Well, I was passing through this state and this is my, like my, my, uh, hub. When I'm passing through this state, I stop in this city. This is where I stay over. So I was here about a month ago because I was passing through and I went to Hardee's. So I go to Hardee's tonight. Now about a month ago, I, I don't know if I, if I went once or twice because I, just like right now, I'm making kind of like a round trip. I'm going basically to my storage unit. And so I have to pass through on my way to the storage unit. I'm going to stay up by my storage unit for a few days, get some things done. And then I'm going to come back through and go back to the Airbnb I've been staying at. So I'm making like a round trip and I did the same, well, almost same round trip about a month ago. So I was at the same Hardee's about a month ago, once, maybe twice, right? And I order the same special order, right? I pull up to the window at the Hardee's tonight. You're the one who always orders X, Y, Z. And I'm like, always, I've been here once, maybe twice. What? Like, how, why are you remembering me? I don't know. I'm sure I'm going to get mixed uh, oh, opinions on this, feedback on this. But to me, this is just, like, I can't even fly under the radar. I can't even just go get a sandwich at a fast food chain without random people. I am passing through this state. I am passing through this city. I don't live here. It's not like I, I go there every week or something. I'm not like some regular customer. This is literally the second or third time I have been to this particular Hardee's in my life. You're the one who always orders X, Y, Z on your sandwiches. Da, 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 da. Why are you noticing that? 
why do you remember that? Why are you remembering my face, my car, whatever it is? Why are you remembering my order? You see, you see all kinds of people, like, and I know this may seem stupid, it may seem trivial, it may seem petty, it may seem insignificant, it may seem unimportant, but the Lord is ministering to me and he's telling me, no, you're being watched. You're being watched. And I did just recently see someone else address this. <clears throat> um, and yes, there is such thing as monitoring spirits. There is a type of spirit called monitoring. Um, and yes, there is gang stalkers and all of that and everything. And I've done everything that God, that God has taught me to do to safeguard against that. Um, my... I'm on, I'm at the last level of deliverance right now. I'm not completely delivered. I'm almost at the like 50% point of my last level of deliverance. And so maybe it's just a matter of those spirits are kind of like acting up. God has taught me that if I interact with certain people, their spirits can actually hyperactivate my spirits. This is how things work on the seventh level of deliverance anyway. I'll be teaching on all this later this year. Um, the, the second level, the... The domain doors, you can come into agreement with, with other people's spirits, but the seventh level, the last level, others, other people's spirits can like hyperactivate your same type of spirits if you have them. And right before they leave, they, they like to manifest and act up as well and, and influence other people against you. So that very well could be what's going on here. And <clears throat> I think that's what God is telling me is happening. Um, but to those of you that are the two witnesses, this could be an indication to you that you are part of the two witnesses. This could be confirmation to you. This is a warning to you. Just be aware that if you think no one's watching, if you think you're going unnoticed, if you think you're flying under the radar, think again. And this is what it's going to come down to, okay? And I, I do believe that ultimately this is going to culminate to the two witnesses being killed. And... <clears throat> I'm not allowed to say what I believe the Lord revealed to me as to how the two witnesses will be killed. I'm not looking forward to it, I'll say that. But, you know, people have prophesied about how, you know, Christians would be stalked and whatever. But it's particularly the two witnesses. That's what God has told me. I sat down after I got back to this hotel room and I discussed it with him. And I said, Lord, what is this, you know? Is this just a matter of everyone who's truly going to heaven, everyone in the Holy of Holies? He said, no. I said, is it Philadelphia? He said, no. He said, it's the two witnesses. It's, it's, it's the people who are the most consecrated. It's the people who are living for God. <clears throat> I'm hearing the word unabashedly, okay? Um, it's, it's for those who are truly holy, set apart. That's what holy means, to be set apart. Those who are dedicated to God. Um, be aware of this, okay? And what comes to mind, of course, is gray man methods. You know, um, you don't want to be wearing like a neon pink shirt or anything like that and draw more attention to yourself. But just uh, be aware, take precaution, um, don't offer more information than is necessary, and uh, just ask God for strategy, ask God for wisdom as to how to proceed in your day to day living because, yeah. The two witnesses are being watched. They've been being watched. I know I certainly have. I have been <clears throat> attacked quite a bit. People sending witchcraft and whatever, whatever. But again, to, to some of you, this may seem just like I'm reading into things or whatever. But to those of you who are part of the two witnesses, you'll know what I'm talking about. This is just strange. It's disturbing. It's disturbing, is what it is. It's very disturbing. Now, now, also, I have talked about on here how because we're at the end of the age, Satan is rising, and yada, 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 people in general are just becoming more and more wicked. Most of the world took the mark already. So, I mean, we shouldn't be surprised. Um, but I have talked about how businesses are just, like, shooting themselves in the foot. They're cutting their nose off their... their how does the, the, the saying go? They're cutting their nose off despite their face, whatever, um, more and more businesses have this attitude of like, we don't need your business, you know, take your business elsewhere, which is so foolish. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, so that, that could be part of it as well, which is, you know, I'm sure fueled by the wickedness, the evil spirits. Again, you know, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities, powers, rulers, and hosts. But it, it's just disturbing. It, it's just disturbing. And I was actually surprised that Yeshua said yes. He wanted me to make a video about it. So I should probably shut up. It's been 20 minutes already. But I, I just can't get over this. I, I just can't get over that. Like, we've had a lot of complaints about you. By who? You employees? Like, I, I'm the customer. I'm the customer. You know, it... it that's the kind of conversation that happens with like some subordinate employee by the manager of an established business. You know, like you sit your employee down and say, hey, we've had a lot of complaints about you from who? The customers, you know? I am the customer and I got this little punk kid in the window telling me, we've had a lot of complaints about you. And then I go to a totally different state, totally different city. This is the second or third time I've even gone to this particular location. Oh, you you always order. Da, 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 da. Why are you watching me? Why are you stalking me? Why do you know what I order? What? What? Just, it's creepy. It's disturbing. It's really disturbing. Satan is watching us, two witnesses. Satan is on us like white on rice. Be aware. <clears throat> Lord, is there anything else you want me to say? I was asking him beforehand if there was like notes he wanted me to take or anything. Is there anything else, Holy Spirit, Yeshua, Yahweh, that you want me to say? I think that's it. I, I just, I just, I just feel moved to, to share this. So just be aware. Um, Again, I'm not going to hop on the, the Chosen One bandwagon. Um, I saw something pop up in my thread about how coming up in the future, that TV show is going to be basically promoting the One World Religion and all that kind of nonsense. And I've never seen the show. I've not been led to watch it. I've always known that there was something ungodly about it. And that's why I don't, <clears throat> I don't participate in the whole Chosen One thing. But we're talking about the two witnesses here. Okay, the two witnesses. <clears throat> Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Two witnesses. Be ready for what's coming. Okay? We are inching closer and closer and closer to our demise in this natural world. I do believe the Lord is blessing us. There, I, I believe there's going to be a time, a season, where we're going to have blessing and we're going to have it good for a while, but... We know from scripture what happens to us, okay? So just start discussing that with, with God. Start discussing that with Yeshua and start bracing your, your heart for that, okay? Because you don't want to deny him. You don't, I mean, be true to witnesses, I don't think ever would, honestly. But just be aware. Be aware, you know? Um, and make sure you're getting your deliverance, okay? If you're interested in deliverance, you can email me now and I can get you going on the process because it is a process, okay? Later on this year, I'm going to be coming on here and I'm going to be doing a lot of like serving you up some meat teachings, okay? Like some real comprehensive, straight from God stuff, okay? But like I said, I want to get my, my ducks in a row and get everything ready, complete, because I know I'm going to have a lot of people challenging things and whatever so just anyway i'll shut up just just be aware two witnesses be aware that every stupid trivial little thing you're doing people are watching people are taking notice so just be aware of that and make sure you're asking god for wisdom and strategy as to how to proceed in your day-to-day -day life i'm telling you ask yeshua sit at his feet and ask him what he wants you doing what he wants you not doing and pay attention to those little nudges those little whispers those little convictions from holy spirit because that that's the job of holy spirit yes holy spirit gives you conviction regarding your sin but holy spirit also gives you wisdom and strategy and insight and will warn you like uh-uh don't do that or don't do that that way or don't do that right now or whatever like if you like pay attention listen internally intentionally for those little lack of peace moments where like something in you is like mm, pay attention for that pay attention okay i bless you all in the name of yeshua the christ of nazareth